Today we're going to take a look at how to make a more complicated image more simple. It's easy to just say, well, simplify the photograph and it's easier to paint. But how do you simplify a photograph? So I want to go through some steps of what to think about and look at and how to eliminate to make the painting uh, easier or more simple. Now today we want to look at how to simplify more difficult subject matter. It's easy to say take this photograph and just make it more simple so you can paint it. Well, what are the things you do to simplify the landscape? And there's three things, but three basic things I do to make things a bit more simple. The first is what we've talked about a lot, and that's separating the planes. Here we have the sky plane. Um, flat plane is right here. In fact, it's right in here. We've got a big slanted plane, another slanted plane back here, which I might make a little bigger. And then, you, of course, you have the shrubbery, the vertical shrubbery and cactus and rocks here on that slanted plane. So if I can do that and I can block things in each plane, a couple of big values, that's going to simplify it. The other thing is to find layers, when we're, especially if we're talking about shrubbery and trees. When I look at the shrubbery here, or trees, whatever they are. They're hard to paint, whatever they are. It's all this stuff in here, not necessarily the cactus, but that's flat. It doesn't have much variation. So what I want to do is go ahead and find layers of shrubbery or trees that recede and go back. What I would do before that, and I guess this could be considered the fourth, the way to simplify would be to crop it, get rid of stuff I don't want. And that, of course, simplifies it. But what I want to do is group or layer these trees. So I can have, I might, sometimes I start with the background. I want all of these. Then I'll go ahead and put a line down for the bottom of the shrubbery. That's one layer. Here's another layer. And I'm, I'm forcing some things together here. In other words, some of this might be a little further back, a little closer, but I'm shoving them together into about three or four layers. This is number one. There's second layer. Then I'm gonna have the third layer, and I would probably get rid of this bush. I don't like it. So that's three layers, maybe a fourth back in here. Probably include that one too. So. If I can separate those shrubbery by value, the ones coming closer in this case are a little lighter because they're getting more sunlight. These are a little darker and the ones that are further away, I have to make a lot lighter or somewhat lighter so they show some depth. Again, the fo realizing the photographs go really flat. There's just no depth in this at all. So if I can find two, three, four layers of trees, that's going to give my painting a bit more depth. And I separate them by value and a little bit by temperature as things go back. Now these don't, this isn't a big distance, you know, from here to here, but I still want to separate the value a bit more. So that's the third, separating by the planes, cropping, or probably cropping first. That's usually the first thing I do. Separated by planes, find layers of shrubbery, or if it's a big field of rocks, you find layers of rocks, pull them together. The last is looking at the focal point, which for me, it's not necessarily an object. It could be right here or right in here, emphasizing more of the rocks down below. But if I stare right there, and out of my peripheral vision, I don't see much of any of this. So I can eliminate the idea of having to render all that grass. I do want this land mass here on the flat plane. These are my two pieces of dirt surrounding the, you know, up next to the water. And that's my flat plane. So I want the dirt there. I just don't want all that grass. I don't see it when I look at my focal point. Plus I know it's not that interesting. So I'm really not interested in that anyway. So whatever I don't see too much, if I'm looking here, you know, this stuff, disappears these rocks way up here. Plus I know I really don't want to show those anyway. I don't want to get caught up in that. My focal point again is the strong dark and light kind of in this area. Then maybe a secondary would be the water. So decide what you want to eliminate and that is done by finding the focal point, staring at it and whatever you don't see out of your peripheral vision or don't see it very much. You don't have to paint it. So this stuff, the grass, some of the rocks I can, I can eliminate. 
and but I know I want to eliminate the shrubbery, so I just make the rock a little bit bigger. So those four ways, and we'll look at a few more images here. When I look at this, again, what I liked about this was the variation of color in here along with the dark and light of these rocks. So kind of that area in there, maybe a bigger area, including some of the foliage, water, rocks. That's kind of my interest right in there. That's where I want to spend most of my time. So the first thing I do is crop. I don't need a lot of this stuff. Just way too much of that shrubbery. The eye has to kind of sort through before it gets, again, to the focal point in there. And I don't need some of this over on this side. I do want most of the foreground. I want the foreground in there. So I'm going to crop. A little bit of the sky comes off because it's not that interesting. Some of the trees and shrubbery on the right, but get rid of a lot of that. And that's that zooms in a bit more to my focal point. Then when I stare at my center of interest, and I'm going to make it right in here. When I stare there, I don't see too much of what's going on back in here. I do want the big shapes, and I don't see a lot of the little darks and lights up in here, which I know I don't want to paint anyway, but looking at the, your center of interest and seeing what kind of disappears when you just stare at your center of interest. A lot of the uh, definition of, of what's going on here. So I want to keep this shrubbery just a simple dark and light, a little bit of broken color maybe. But everything on the peripheral is kept very simple because I just don't see any detail. And I know I don't want to anyway. So that, that goes a long way to help. Breaking up layers. This thing is in the foreground. I've got to make it a shape that's a bit more interesting. It's just too much of a glob. So I know the light's being real aware of where the light is coming from really helps. So I want a definite shadow area here and have that rock underneath. That's one thing I don't like about the focal point. So I have to make something that reads a little simpler in terms of what the light's doing. Simple, dark, and light. Then beyond that, you know, this is my first layer of shrubbery and trees. Then I have this layer. Then I have this background. I like having enough of that background that I can show a pretty good difference between here and here value-wise. Darks are lighter back in here than up in here. And the lights will be a bit more faded. Not much, because again, that's not a lot of distance. Now the rest of the layers of stuff, I think it's pretty obvious. You got a layer here, it's a bank to the river, and then you got layers on the mountains. This is kind of the hill. And then the rocks become a bit more vertical, although they're still slanted. And a layer there and a layer there. So simplify those layers. Now I look at all these lines, it looks more complicated, but I'm forcing some depth in there by pushing all the shrubbery or whatever it is, grouping together into layers that go back slightly. And in the trees, I don't want it really in here more than three. The mountains have three or four layers by, you know, the overlapping. One more here. When I look at this, again, find what it is that you're interested in. And for me, yeah, let's say it's right about in there. Pretty big focal point, probably more in here. And the focal point could be fairly large. But again, you're eliminating. I mean, this is interesting too. I like the light play on the rocks, which but I would make that secondary to up here. So you have to make a decision. So I would crop. I want to get rid of a lot on both sides. And I want just enough sky to give the mountain some space. So here is my cropping. And separate the planes. And sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. I'm going to see my flat plane from here down. And then from this line to this line is kind of my slanted. And then I have these vertical cliffs. You know, there's some slanted on the vertical, but these are vertical cliffs. They're more like trees than they are a hillside, a slanted hillside. So, And of course the sky. So those are my planes. Separating those planes really helps. Then my next thing is to look at the focal point and eliminate stuff I don't see. When I stare right in here, that's kind of my focal area. A lot of this stuff just disappears, which tells me I'm going to keep it a simple dark and light. So I've got all this dark in here. I'll have to have two darks, the darkest dark and the lighter dark. But I really want to force a definite shadow pattern in there of simple dark and light. The photograph does not have all these shrubbery, do not have hard edges. There's not many hard edges at all. So the more I can find those hard edges, the better. Or create harder edges to create better shape. And then layering, I've got stuff in here that's in front. The layering is a little more obvious here. 
because it lines up pretty good. But these are definite sections of one group of shrubbery or trees in front of another, and I have to show it that way. And then I have trees back in here, and then of course then we get into the hills hill here and then the hill there. So I want to show enough difference in value between these layerings of trees and rocks to show depth. I want to make sure things overlap for one thing, that they don't just look side by side. This rock has to overlap that rock so it goes behind and then show up enough of a difference in value here compared to back in here. And the more distance I want to show there, the more value change. And again, we're always talking larger shapes of value, not small. I'm not comparing a bunch of tiny values, the big, big shapes. So um, cropping, separating the four planes, layering from foreground to background, rocks and trees, shrubbery, mountains, and then looking at the focal point. And whatever you don't see well with the focal point, you know you can either really, really simplify or get rid of. Now here's my thumbnail. In the reference, you can see all I've done is crop it. I've cropped it on the computer, but don't have to have the computer to crop it. Crop it on the uh, sketchbook. I did two or three of these, um, trying to see if a 9 by 12 shape would look any better. I like the 8 by 10. Plus, I'm going to do this bigger. An 8 by 10 would translate to a 16 by 20, and a 16 by 20 translates roughly to a 30, uh, 24 30. It's actually 24 by 32. But that way, if I stay within the size, I know my thumbnail, all I have to do is reproduce this shadow pattern on my canvas, no matter what size I'm doing. 